Hello everyone, this is Studio Life. I'm Faith Honeybee Setley and we are back with another video. This morning we're going to be drawing a three-dimensional box. Now this is going to be a bit of a lengthy video, so do stay tuned to the end of the video because I will be sharing with you a bonus. What am I going to be doing? I'm going to be sharing with you a technique, what you can use to bring your three-dimensional box more to life. So, do stay tuned. Now, if you're new to my channel and like what I do, by all means, click the subscribe. Um, would so love to meet you. I love meeting new people. Also, if you like my content, consider giving the video a big thumbs up. Or, leave a lovely comment. Or, share the video itself. More people get to see the video. And, who knows, I can open more doors of possibilities to people. Broaden their horizons. Give them some ideas. And, let them have some fun. Now, I'm going to share with you what you're going to need to get around this three-dimensional box. But, I need to do a shout-out. Hello to our new subscriber. Yay! Hello and welcome. And I just bought me tripod, so sorry about that. Um, Welcome to Laren Dre. I'm probably massacring your name, love, and I'm really sorry. But I know you. Her name's Lara. Welcome to our little art family. Thanks for subscribing, love. Now, onward and upward. I'm using this morning a mixed media pad by Canson for my three-dimensional box. Now, these pads have got really thick paper, which is like really necessary for what we need to do this morning um, because it deals with a bit of moisture you can use watercolors with these pads, you can use paint, you can use, well, basically anything. Um, and we're dealing with two types of moisture this morning. Hmm. We'll talk about that in a minute. So this particular pad was 10.49 when I got it at Lasting Memories Locker Room before all the craziness hit. It's probably more expensive now. If you don't have this, you can use a sketch pad, an artist sketch pad, as long as the paper is nice and thick so that it doesn't flake, it doesn't tear, it doesn't rip. You can also use a flat canvas. A little different effect, but you can use a flat canvas. Now, set this aside. You are going to need an eraser. You're also going to need pencil sharpener. Now, you might not even use those, but just to be on the safety side of it, there they be. Ruler. Make sure your ruler's got your ruler, rubber baby buggy bumpers. Make sure your ruler's got inches and centimeters on it because we're going to be using inches to draw this box, but the centimeters do come in play. I'll elaborate on that in a minute. This steel ruler I got at the dollar shop, it's got a lovely non slip grip thing on the back of it, but it does tend to leave crumbs all about. But <laughs> I love it anyway. Now, what are we doing? We need pencils. You gotta have pencils. You can't draw without pencils. Um, I'm using my Statler Mars Lumograph pencils. I love these things. They're my go-to pencils. Uh, Walmart used to carry them. I don't think they do anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, that was my computer going off for some strange reason. Um, you can uh try Amazon or any business supply shop might carry these. Now. My Mars Lumograph pencil, what I'm using, I don't even know if you can see this, I'm actually under my camera and behind my tripod, so it makes it a little difficult to share with you. It's an HB, it's, it's straight HB. Um, you can use a graphite pencil if you would be so inclined, or if you don't have either one of these, a regular HB pencil will do, a school pencil, um, lead is lead is lead. So, we'll set that aside. You also need a dark pencil. Um, my go-to one here is... Probably can't see that. I don't know. 8B. My Lumograph pencil is 8B. And you can tell the difference. One is really dark and one is not. Now, if you don't have a darker graphite pencil, you can use, like, a black pencil crayon. Or a black watercolour pencil, just without the water. So, you can do either one of those things. 
What is in this shot glass right here? Hopefully you can see it. I've got white acrylic uh, paint by Deco Art, and it's an old bottle. But if you don't have that, any white paint will do. Just not oil paint, because you want something that's going to dry. Um, you can also use liquid paper, if you would be so inclined, because it will basically do the same thing. You'll get the same effect out of it. So, um, again, no water in here, just a blob of white paint. Now, what do you need for the bonus? These guys right here. Cosmetic wedges, nothing fancy, just out the dollar shop. You don't need something fancy unless you're doing makeup. And when I use these to paint, basically, I'll just use one and then bin it. So, nothing fancy. Now, pardon my big fat arm. This is what they look like. They kind of look like one of those pillows what you put between your knees, you know, if you've got a bad back and um, they're squishy. <laughs> don't squeeze the Charmin. So, what else do you need? Black paint, um, you want something that's going to give an opaque effect and mixes with water, okay? So, not oil paint, no, 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 no. Um, not stained glass paint or anything like that because it gives a shiny effect, we don't want that. What is opaque? Matte is something you can't see through at all. Translucent is something you can see through if you water it down enough. Opaque is somewhere in the middle. Um, this is Delorani black uh, acrylic ink, and this one's empty because I've like basically massacred it to death. Now, it's in this shot glass with hold this up here about that much water, and just not a ton of black paint, just a little bit. Test it out on a spare canvas or a spare bit of paper or whatever. You just to get. An opaque effect. Something like you can see through just a little bit. But not a whole lot. Um, and you don't want matte. You don't want something you can't see through at all. You're also going to need a black pen. Just regular black pen. So let's get around this. We're going to take a ruler. Now. I'm going to line this up as straight as I can do. Because it's difficult seeing around this tripod. And I'm going to take my HP pencil. Hopefully this is straight. Um, we're going to measure this out. One and a half. Our first two lines are going to be one and a half from the end of the ruler. There's my one and a half top. This is where the centimeters come into play. 26. Now we're going backwards on this ruler. So just go to the 26 and a half mark. I feel like I'm shouting into my camera. I'm sorry if I am. Um, and there you've got two nice lines. Nothing complicated, just two nice lines. Now, we're going to take a ruler. We're going to go around the other way. And I'm going to try and get this as straight as possible. I can see behind this tripod. Uh, okay. I've got a problem with my ruler eating my pencil, so bear with me. What do I mean by that? I mean my pencil wants to go underneath the ruler. Um, okay, so we've got that, and we're going to join this line up, line over here up. Hopefully get this as straight as possible. Like I said, I am behind my tripod. There we go. There. And we've got a square. Yay! <laughs> Good on us. Now, we're going to take our ruler we're going to start on the top line of this box right from the end of the ruler i'm going to get as close as possible now you're going to take it an inch in just to the inch mark and we're going to make a funny little line you're like what are you doing 
show you in a moment. We'll take the ruler, go up and down to a half inch, only a half inch, where that funny little mark we made connects to the top of the box. And we're going to draw a line up. Now, you've not got a clue what I'm doing, do you? So there we go from here. We'll take this ruler to the end of this funny little line. Now, I bet you're thinking we're going to draw an inch and a half. Nope. Three-dimensional work is, is realism, realism, and <clears throat> how can I describe this? It's, it's like if you're standing on a highway, at the edge of a highway, and you look out. Well, a highway doesn't go the same all the way down, does it? No, it doesn't. It gets narrow. Um, so you're looking off into the distance. With this box... This bit here is in your face. This bit here is the bottom of the box. So it's got to be a little bit smaller. So we're only going to do, I'm hoping I've got this absolutely straight. We're only going to do an inch and a quarter. So just go to the inch and a quarter line. There we go. That looks really weird. Okay. So now we're going to take our ruler. and get as close as we possibly can to the end of this and we're also going to try and make sure it's straight and because this is the bottom of the box we're only going to bring this line down one inch that's all we're going to do now, you're saying this does not look like a box. Patience. So, we're nearly there. What are we doing now? We are connecting our lines. That's what we're doing. All will be revealed. You're working at the diagonal. Line number two. Oops. <laughs> I need more coffee. Oh my God. Sorry about that. I went completely hog wild. And our final line. Ta-da! We've got a box. Now, the next step is because we've got a floating box. We have a floating box. We don't need a floating box. We need to ground the box. What do I mean by that? Give it some substance. Give it something up against so that it looks like it's not floating about in air. So take your ruler. Go to the bum of the box. Try to keep this sucker straight. And you're going to give it a horizon point. So we're just going to draw this out here. And go out the other side. Ta-da! We've grounded our box. So now we've got to give the box a light source. Um, Everything normally has a light source unless you're in a pitch black room. So that's what gives it dimension. That's what gives it light and shading or smoke and shadows, as I call it. So let's just pretend, let's do this really simple, that there's a light source right above the box. Okay? The box is up against the wall and it's sitting on the floor and there's a light source right above the box. So, the point closest to you is going to be the point with the least amount of light. The next point with the, le with the least amount of light is going to be the size of the box. 
You can't see what's going on back here because it's up against the wall. And the light is shining straight down, which means this is getting hit with all the light. This, this. All the light is coming straight down. So I'm going to turn this to the side and we're going to start a shading process. We're going to take our HB pencil lightly on its side or tip or angled and we're just going to shade. There goes my computer again. Don't do this too dark because, well, you'll see in a moment what we're going to do. And like I said, this is sort of a lengthy video and I do apologise, but I'm trying to get all my points in to help you get around what you want to do and how you want to like make this happen. Okay, now there's one more thing what you need aside from all the ingredients what I told you about. What is it? These. Clench your fists. Get nervous. Think of something what makes you nervous so that your palms get just a little bit sweaty. Okay? Because you need a little bit of moisture but not water. Get your fingers nice and a little bit sweaty. And then you're going to do this. This is how I shade things. And if your finger goes dry, either use the next finger or clench your fist. Now, this is what I meant when I said the effect's going to be different if you use a like a flat canvas because you're going to get that canvasy mark through it and even this paper is a little bit grainy so there's a little bit of a grain to it but this is the effect we be going for now pretty cool eh so that's the second the middle point of shading now we're going to go to the darkest point which is further away from the light source this is where the dark pencil comes into play. I'm going to move this so I don't go spilling it. Take the dark pencil or your black crayon or whatever you got going on. Do the same as you did with the side. Don't go real dark because it is a darker pencil. Hopefully you can see the effect what's going on here. Now, again, get nervous. Get that sweat worked up a little bit. And if you go over the edge of it a little bit, don't worry about it. We're going to be doing something in a moment that's going to sort of fix that. Now, one thing wrong with this technique, or not wrong, but you can muff up. If you, if you do it too much, it will actually take the color off. <laughs> so, use your own judgment. Ta-da! Now, you got dirty hands. Take your muckle butt rag and wipe that off because you don't want to get that in your white paint. Or wipe it off to the best of your ability. Now, foof. 
one thing you're going to do, you're going to take this lovely little pen. So we're moving into the bonus bit. Make sure it writes. I've got a crumb going on here. And start at the beginning of the box. Now you might have to keep going back to your... I've got a spare bit of paper. There we go. You don't want a horrendous effect, you just want a little bit of an effect. Just to sort of make this a wee bit on the different side. And you notice it didn't start at the top of the box because the light is still going to be hitting that and you don't want it dark all the way up. And we're not doing the butt end of the box because that's not dark. That is light. And go over this side again. That way. There. Now. What are we going to do now? Well. We are going to take go back and take our dark pencil. Right here. And the box is going to cast a shadow. out the front but you don't want to bring the shadow straight out the front because that's going to look a little stupid because the box is on an angle isn't it now so you've got to bring the shadow out on an angle And the shadow closest to the box will be darker. It's not going to be as light and it's not going to be the same shade as this guy right here. Okay. As it gets further out, it will get lighter. So again, hand. And don't do it quite as thorough because you do, like, say this is the floor, you want to see some of the floor through the shadow. Okay, so I'm going to show you um, a couple of more things and then we'll have got around it. Um this the dump right here what's in this is the black acrylic ink along with the water we're going to take the small end of the wedge like the wedge cosmetic wedge and we're going to dip it okay and lightly going to lightly go over that now we're going to do it again and we're only going to go part way up Is like I said, the shadow closest to the box is the darkest. Okay, and we're actually going to do 
a bit of the box as well. Just a little bit. I'm going to make it a little darker as it gets towards the bottom of the box. Okay, now you might be asking yourself, what are we going to do with that white paint? I will show you. And this, I'm going to have to use my other finger because I've got these fingers all mucked up. You're going to take your finger, dip it in the paint, and we're going to close the box. We are going to close the box. But we're going to let the light spill over just a little wee bit and then we're just gonna like paint a little bit over to the side just to give it a little light. And a wee bit over here. There you go. There's your three dimensional box. Now this is a really long video, it's almost a half hour long and um, hopefully you enjoy this video. You have a great day. Take care, my loves. Bye-bye.